This is Pastor Dave Kotzma. Pastor Dave is in Horicon at Marshview Ministries. We've had Pastor Dave on in the past, so if you're looking for his uh, introduction, you can find that there. But Pastor Dave, what's up at Marshview Ministries these days? Well, uh, what's up? I guess uh, the summer is up, right? So we're we'll beginning into our summer season, and some of the things are beginning to slow down a little bit. And um, I think summer for us has always been a time where we've tried to engage more with some of our outreach activities and just trying to connect with our community, doing some prayer walking, walking uh, around the town and just, uh, you know, hopefully running into people and, and striking up some conversations. So I enjoy the summertime. You uh, inspired me one time in an LDN um conversation it wasn't about outreach at all i forget what it was about even um and you just kind of flippantly said when i was doing some street evangelism or some door-to-door ministry in horicon and then just kind of went on and it was kind of like hmm we can do street evangelism door-to-door outreach when we're not on a mission trip you can walk (laughs) over to your neighbor and invite him in so that came up uh, yesterday in a, in a meeting we had at church. Well, how do we, how do we let uh-huh. our neighbors know if this is different? And go knock on their door and you tell them. Tell them, yeah, right. I mean, it always seems like for mission, we always think about going someplace else to do some mission right. work. And, right. and uh, we forget that there's so many opportunities right into our own uh, backyard. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I enjoy the walking on a summer. Sometimes my wife and I will just go walking and we'll, we run into people in the front yard and just, you know, strike up a conversation, introduce herself, and uh, you never know where it goes. I remember asking somebody, you know, just off the cuff, you know, is there anything that we can pray for you? And, and that was, they were totally shocked, but uh, most people will often say, well, there is something going on, you know, a sick family member or something like that. And it's just a, a way of, I, I guess connecting, but also showing Christian care and concern. Yeah. What are you mentioned? Some of the outreach opportunities you guys have in the summers. What are some of those for for your congregation? Well, right now we're we're kind of looking into. Well, we one member started doing something. It's called pass the plate. It's kind of a little bit different, but uh, she's making a meal in their in their neighborhood. She passes it to one family with instructions on how to just, you know, enjoy the meal. Here's a word of encouragement. Um, You know, here's some additional cards. So the hope is, is that you take this dish, you put a new meal in it, ship it to another neighbor. That's a good idea. Pass pass it through the neighborhood. And then she's going to have at the end of a month period, however many houses that it actually goes through, uh, to have a a cookout at their place just for the neighborhood to kind of get to know each other and, and uh, build up some relationships. And so we're uh, uh, being a part of that. And uh, that's, that's one of them. But uh, we've got a couple of things that are kind of in the cooker yet, but um, haven't really seen them develop. As you know, the, the summer weather hasn't been the greatest so far yet. So no. we're, we're waiting for that too. We're about to get a storm here. Just, I had to run over before we started and it's getting cool. Shut the windows. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> cool enough. How do you, I'm sure a lot of people who are watching are interested in, um, like, where do you get outreach ideas from? A lot of our churches might not have a lot of outreach going on. Um, Mm -hmm. Where do we start? Where do you get an idea like that? That's a great idea. Sure. Uh, A couple of things. One is, is I try to just do a lot of reading. I'll just randomly, you know, look up books on you know, the web and to say, hey, this is small town or rural mission or outreach in your community. I'll just grab those books. I'll read through it. Sometimes they got some great ideas. Sometimes they don't. Um, Fresh Expressions is one of the things that's uh, uh, a ministry that helps uh, churches just try to find new ways of engaging in mission and and mission in in their community. So Fresh Expressions is a, a great resource. Um, you know, sometimes it's just brainstorming little ideas and taking the initiative to do it. So um, I talk to other pastors and see ones, you know, what uh, their congregations are doing. And there's very little that I create myself, that's for sure. So it's mm-hmm. usually uh, finding something that's 
that works or that sounds like it's workable in our church as well. Do you have a summer preaching series going on? Yeah, um, actually just started last Sunday with uh, the book of Colossians. So it's a small, it's a small book, four chapters. Um, I see it as a book of encouragement and the centrality, the supremacy of Christ and how to live in that um, reality of the supremacy of Christ. Mm. And uh, so I'm using it as just a, um, a way of, of talking about um, the supremacy of Christ. How does it impact our life as we see a big picture? And, and um, so the first message last week was about uh, encouraging words as the Apostle Paul introduces the letter to Colossae and says, you know, I've heard about your faith, your love, your endurance, and your patience in the gospel, and it's known around the area for your faith. And uh, so I says, you know, I, I look at that and I go, I, I hope that Marshview, you know, is known in our community for a a church that's known for its love, its faith, its patience, endurance, and stuff like that. Um, and then in the second half of the chapter, it's, it starts off with the idea that, you know, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. And then it goes into this whole, you know, God, Christ is supreme and he's, um, you know, all of these different aspects. And then he says he's the head of the church and he goes into different aspects of who this Christ is. And uh, I see that is if we get a big picture of Christ, um, it could really encourage our faith and our walk. And I think that's where, you know, the, the Church of Colossae was, was uh, Paul reminds them that, you know, their faith, hope and love and all of these things that they're doing as a church that's being known around the area is not of themselves. It's of this big picture of who Christ is, that he's supreme. And so those words of encouragement, um, I'm hoping, encourages our congregation to to live out that that big picture of Christ in our life. Uh, it gives us both freedom, but it also encourages us to live that out, um, hopefully in a very visible way in our community. Talked about having a big picture of Christ. In what ways do you think the church has a small picture of Christ? Mm. You know, I think one way is that we often very personalize Christ in a sense that he's my savior, you know, he's my Lord, um, you know, he's done this for me, you know, and um, um, if you think about it, the, the church of Colossae was a, a Gentile church, which they were far from the gospel before, you know, far from Christ because of the, the Jewish context of, um, you know, the Jewish faith. Um, and so sometimes as Christians, we can get kind of insular, you know, we kind of get small, you know, in our thinking about our relationship with Christ. And I think the book of Colossians is it shows this big picture that, uh, you know, he created all things, he made all things, all things are held together by him. And so we get a, a, a more encompassing view of Christ for the world. Hmm. And uh, so I hope that that vision you know, creates a bigger picture, which creates us to be able to see that God is involved uh, much more than just my narrow focus of myself, which unfortunately the, the American culture church is very much, you know, us centered yeah. in a sense, and we need a bigger picture. Yeah, that comes across in the <laughs> preaching in so many churches. Uh, who, who is the, the center of the preaching, the pastor or the hearer? all too mm -hmm. often, rather than Christ. Well, any ways that we could be praying for you or for uh, Marshview, Pastor Dave? Yeah, I think like uh, like most of churches, you know, we're uh, um, praying that we just keep connecting with people, that uh, the gospel um, message that not only we, we preach, but that we live has an impact um, in our, um, our lives and in our community, and you know, we would love to see as some of um, you know, what we've been trying to do is just, uh, again, re-engage in our community and to make ourselves known and present and, and ultimately, hopefully, uh, prayerfully lead people along their journey of faith to Christ, too. So 
Um, you know, every every church would like to have bigger numbers. I would just like to have bigger impact. Yeah. 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 Well, thanks for that. We'll keep you in prayer and uh, appreciate your time today. All right. Thank you, Zach. Appreciate it.